I'll weld the box on the bar and as you can see there's plenty of clearance from the heat that'll come up when the gathering port lids open. Okay, there's the control box mounted on the steel post. So now I'll drill a few holes and I'll mount the box on the furnace frame right here. Okay, I'm going to pop out this half inch knockout here and put in this 90 degree angled flexible conduit connector and that will receive the wire from the control box. So the amount of wire that I'm leaving down in the furnace box is enough wire to get from the connector comfortably down to the bottom element connection. I put the connector as close to the end of the lead wire as possible because these will be hot. And I use a pair of vice grips on the bolt end. And a wrench on the nut end for tightening. But I don't push down with the vice grips. I don't want to apply any pressure to the lead wire going into the element because I don't want to snap it off. So I just basically hold the vice grips still and use the wrench to do the tightening. What I've done is I've cut a piece of screen and I'll be screwing the screen to the front face to ensure that there's always lots of ventilation around the connections. The first thing that I'll do is I'll run these red and black wires from the elements into the top of the relay. So I'll bring the black one over to this side here, the black side, and I'll bring the red one here to the red side. I've got about 25 feet of this flexible number 8 wire and I've stripped about one foot on the end. And now I'm going to attach the red and the black wires to the red and the black terminals on the supply side of the power relay. So the next thing I'll do is the grounding. There will be a bare ground wire in that cable and it has to be fastened securely to the metal enclosure somewhere. And because the enclosure is welded to this bar that's welded to the furnace frame, it grounds the entire furnace. These electrical boxes almost always have a ground lug in the box. So here's the one in this box right here and I've attached the ground wire from the power cable to it. These thermocouples come with a, a aluminum housing with a conduit connection. But it's important again to make sure that there's lots of air circulation around these connections. So what I do is I take the uh, I take the lid off the housing and just leave the connection exposed. Now the color coding for these R-type thermocouples is red and black and with thermocouples the red is the negative and the black is the positive so it's important to remember that when the connection is being made to the thermocouple and up inside the controller as well. Okay, the final thing that needs to be done here now is the lid switch. These little micro switches with a roller are about eight dollars, just like this. But there's a version that I'm going to use here because I scored some used ones and they're basically the same thing inside of a housing and they are available uh, from a order catalog and they're about forty dollars in the housing I'm going to mount it right behind the hinge on the gathering port lid so that when the gathering port lid is open 
the switch will be activated and it'll turn off power to the unit. Okay, so here's the switch action. When the lid's up, the switch is in its normal state, which is open, and that means there's no power going to the power relay in the controller. And then when the hinge hits the switch and closes it, then it activates the relay. So on goes the cover on the control panel. The reason why I want to put a socket and a receptacle plug on this furnace is so that it's portable. I can load it in the back of a truck and take it elsewhere, or I can coil up the wire and store it in a corner somewhere if it's not being used. There, the construction part of this video is finished, and the unit's ready to fire up.